All right, so uh, when you're flying the aircraft, this is the control stick. It telescopes up into position. I've got my right hand on the throttle here on the center console, left hand on the control stick. And you can see when I move this stick, I'm moving the control surfaces. There's the elevator that's moving around just like that. When I move it side to side, I'm moving the ailerons out on the wing. So that would be how I would roll the plane and pitch the plane with the control stick. This is just like a normal airplane. My feet are on the outside. There are four pedals on the floor. My feet are right now on the rudder pedals. So you can see when I move these pedals here, the rudders are moving back and forth. So that's how I would fly, just like this. You know, one hand here on the throttle. So driving it, it's very, very familiar to any driver. You just move your foot right here. You put your right foot, gas, brake, just like a normal automatic transmission car. No clutch. Uh, steering wheel, of course, right here. So just gas, brake, and steering wheel for driving. And then what about your GPS system? Yeah, we've got uh, right now a Garmin 496 uh, here is a GPS system. We've got uh, aircraft avionics that monitor the engine and make sure that it's operating well, uh, as well as what's called an attitude indicator, which tells you the orientation of your aircraft. And then speaking of the tech specifics, um, what kind of computer do you have in here? What kind of chips do you use? Any of the hard wiring? Um... So we've been using all off-the-shelf components. So typical off-the-shelf avionics, like you would find in any normal light sport aircraft. So uh, in this one, we have a package that's produced by a company called Dyna Avionics, and uh, that gives you all your uh, attitude heading reference system, wh which way you're going. It's got an internal compass. Uh, it tells you how fast you're going, uh, and it tells you how your engine's doing. Um, the cylinder head temperatures, oil pressure, oil temperature, all the uh, important things to keep track of the engine performance. And um, another thing that I was wondering about was Parachute. Yeah. What happens? So let's say you're in the air, something bad happens. Okay, so the there are a number of options that you've got if something bad happens. Let's say your engine goes out. So first of all, if it's a nice day like today, you might consider just gliding the plane down because you actually can completely control the aircraft when the engine's not, not working. It's just that you start to glide down. So you could steer it down and glide it down to a safe landing. That's one option. But let's say you were over the mountains and it was night out. So you have no idea what's below you. You just can't tell anything. You've got another option, which is this red handle up here. This is a ballistic recovery system. So uh, what you could do is you can pull this handle, and a rocket will shoot out this back window and pull a parachute out that will bring the entire aircraft down underneath the parachute. So you don't have to jump out of the vehicle or anything have like that. Have you guys tested that? Situation? No, but it's been tested by the company that uh, makes the system. Again, this is an off-the-shelf system that we just installed in our vehicle. And they've been credited with over 200 lives saved. This vehicle has so. an integrated safety cage and crumple zones and side impact door beams. You can see that structure here. It's really, this is a very, very strong vehicle. Um, and that's one of the keys to improving the safety is in, an, in the instance of a crash, uh, the vehicle will keep you inside it and it will keep this cage around the occupants fully intact and absorb all the energy outside there. So that that's really key to keeping the occupants safe in a crash. And you got a sunroof. We got, yeah, a moonroof right up here. Yeah, it gives you a nice visibility when you're in a turn. You know, you can just look up here and see if there's anything in, up in front of you when you're turning. It's also got great visibility out the side and uh, good access. Most airplanes actually have to crawl up on top of the wing or duck down below the wing in order to get in or out. So this, you get in and out like you get in and out of a car. So that's really nice. Um, and you can also look right down, see the ground or look up, which is something that usually high wing or low wing airplanes have trouble with that. So it's uh, some nice features that are kind of selling points to pilots. So anytime uh, you're building an aircraft, you've got compromises that you need to make. And the question is just what compromises do you pick? And are the compromises appealing to the pilot population? One of the things that we did was we, on most airplanes, you've got your main landing gear more or less right under the center of gravity of the airplane. Basically, the center of gravity of this vehicle is right about here. So a, a normal airplane would have their main wheels right under here, which makes it really easy to rotate the vehicle on takeoff. We wanted to give the vehicle a very smooth and safe ride when you're driving on the highway. So we put our rear wheels far back there. And what that does is put, by putting all the wheels far away from the center of gravity of the vehicle, it makes it very, very smooth 
riding on the road. And uh, that is a great safety feature when you're driving. If we had our wheels up here and you hit a pothole with them, it could flip the entire vehicle over. Oh, wow. Whereas if you've got them way out there away from your center of gravity, if you hit a pothole, it's no big deal. You feel a little bump, keep going. How many wheels are there? Four? Like a traditional vehicle? Yes. Yeah, there are four wheels uh, that, uh, so it drives like a normal car, it really does. Long wheelbase, wide track, low center of gravity.